It's time to present Scott DuPont to bring you another episode of Finance Your Movie with tips and strategies to help you get your money to tell your story. It's time! Okay, I am thrilled. We are back today with another independent film investor, Monogam Woontyler. Welcome. Huh? Thanks for having me. Um, first, first of all, I really do want to sincere my appreciation because it's really, it's really tough to get guests on this show, but it's even harder to get investors who will openly talk about money, investments, and stuff like that. So I really appreciate your uh, you're taking the time, and hopefully, it's going to be an exciting episode for everybody listening, especially mm-hmm. in our millionaire flicks audience. So um, your company is Gelt Investments, correct? Correct. And where did you come up with the name for that company? It's for actually story? Uh, or, origin is Yiddish. Uh, yes, uh, Hanukkah, Hanukkah time. You play with these little golden coins that you spin the dreidel around, and, and that little that name it means uh, it means gold coins. Actually, is what it means. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so it's a childhood memory that I, I found um, interesting and I'd like to bring some fun into my uh, business world. That's Excellent. I, I, uh, I love I love hearing about the meanings about some of these, uh, especially uh, production companies and investment companies. So you were in the restoration business, um, mm-hmm. I'm gathering for a while. When and why, and we'll talk about your current film in just a minute, but when and why and how did you pivot into film investing and what what attracted to you to this um, this other world of film investing? You're getting you're asking you're asking the question that I ask myself all the time. Um, honestly, it's it's a back my background is like you said, it's construction, restoration, uh, and residential and commercial real estate. That is, and we have a property management as well. Uh, that's in Connecticut, and I, I sold my business. We had some offices in Southern California. And I sold that to uh, an equity firm um, a little over a year ago. I took the year off to spend with my my family, my my wife and two two daughters. We live here in San Diego. And uh, a year came up. I'm like, you, you don't have, you know, you don't need to put bread on the table. Like, you know, I went to this as a, as a single individual. I came here with, you know, no funds. This is this is self made entirely. And um, good for you. It was, time, it was time. Thank you. It was time for a work of passion. <laughs> the first thing I did was go out and buy the website workofpassion.com. I haven't done anything with it, but I was like, work of passion. Oh, cool. So, yeah. So it was, it was um, saying film investing is a very speculative asset. It's, and if you're, especially if you don't have the background, it's extremely speculative. Uh, so there has to be some, I, there has to be love. There has to be a lot of passion and love for the film industry. Um, if you want to have an impact, create content, entertain, tell stories. Um, so if it is purely from an investment standpoint, you better be teaming up with someone who really knows what they're doing. Otherwise, it's you know, if it's there's other ways to make money. There's so that that's um, I'm, I'm glad around. you brought that up about teaming up with people who have experience, who know what they're doing. Is that how you um, got into Out of Order, a uh, uh, current yeah, movie so with was, Louis Guzman that you're a producer on? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, family friend brought me in. And really what drove me there was, what drove me there was the director and the producer. Uh, mainly the producer. He was the friend, the family friend. And I was, he had, he sold himself. To be honest, is he sold himself, and I looked into him. Right, he's like many people in the industry. His background is in, he's an attorney by trade. I apologize for the background voice. No um, he's an attorney by trade, and he just spoke well and had a strong passion for what he's doing. I can tell there was there's going to be some hurdles. It wasn't going to block, and there was some hurdles, and he got over it. You know, and, and still working through things, and like so. You know he's managed businesses, and this is not a you know, it was it was it was a it was a business play. Honestly, it was a business play. I invested in an individual, not in the film, and it's going to do well. 
Uh, what what kind of budget range are we talking? Under two million. Okay. Uh, yeah. But you got some great stars attached for that uh, for that budget range. That that was again. I was intrigued by his his savviness, his ability to to go low budget and bring on those kind of stars. Takes a creativeness, right? You have to be able to you have to be a good casting director with a good vision and sell your passion well enough. And of course, there's without going too into the details, there's there's certain ways of knowing how to read what an actor wants, what what what's the what's their next step in their in their career and how is your film helping them to get there without just you know paying them a large salary because if you don't have the funds and what else do they want other than just money for yeah. their role right yeah so maybe they want a credit maybe they want to prove themselves in another genre those are big things maybe they're getting older in age and they want to you know there's there's things you yeah, yeah, you, you and need then to be very smart, smart about casting. Yeah, and like you said, relationships can make make or break. Oh yeah. So this was your first film investment, correct? Yes. Um, otherwise, I've been involved in like short film space, which you know having credits to my name was never a thing. I never thought I'd go into film. Having credits was not an ambition. And when I decided, I actually called uh, called them up and said, "Let you know." I would like to be, you know, more involved here, uh, not so, you know, less silent and, you know, entertain getting a credit for that as well. Um, so that's what I did. And uh, I'm also, um, I'm leveraging some capital to make my way and learn really the nuts and bolts of the industry. Like, could before I take on other people's capital, which I will be doing, I must know how every single thing turns, right? So I'm on sets for small, you know, short films, a handful of them that I'm financing uh, or co-financing and learning really the ins and outs and working with a solid team. And I've built a, a very nice network over this time. There's no, no better way to learn than being on uh -huh. set. Uh -huh. well, no, great no advice better. from someone who has a, a friend who had a has a nice studio. It's like he came on to me, like me, outside the industry. And uh, we clicked right away. His advice was learn the nuts and bolts, you know, even in anything I did, I, I would never take anyone's money unless I knew the nuts and bolts of every part of it. Not necessarily that I know how to exactly, you know, turn the handle, but I knew well enough to manage the person who was. So, so, so for audience listening, uh, you're not in Hollywood, correct? Like literally, no. I'm in San Diego. I drive up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but are you shooting stuff in Hollywood? Or are you shooting stuff down farther south? What are we doing? Uh, I think Nashville. And then there's going to be San Diego, maybe Tijuana. Okay, so uh, all over the place. In LA, yeah. So um, are you putting – let's back up a little bit. Are you actually putting together like like a fund? That's why you're learning this business and, and other people's money, and you're going to kind of – put some films so together there's gonna, there's gonna be a fun asleep. aspect to it yeah same so the end goal and this is you know three years out is essentially building a studio something that's uh, it's mid-sized we're doing films in the five to ten million range i believe that's that's my end goal and telling you know i have i i found that i came into this people had a lot of what's and why's of you know they have i got pitched all different kinds of scripts and decks and but a lot of people didn't have the business know-how and so that's why i came in i said you know let's see how much i can sponge it at once learn everything about you know, financing uh in this sector and then leverage that and go in from the financial aspect and that's and that's it's working that's i'm, I'm so glad i'm so glad you brought that up so you're getting deluged as soon as you say, "Hey, I'm a film investor." <laughs> a lot of people are, are gonna, you know, start burning your phone up, sending you emails, pitch decks, business plans, and what you you just said something they're lacking. What what are one of the two of the glaring things that these pitch decks or business plans or packages are missing that turn you off? I can use a live example. It's a friend of mine. Hopefully, she she, she sees that she's not too upset. We don't have to mention uh, your name. No, I'm not. But uh, I found out she's shooting. I'm like, okay, where's the where's the best place for me to get hands on experience right now? So I'm talking to a friend. He says one of our close friends is shooting literally a horror around the block from you, up in La Jolla, right? And I said, fantastic. 
So I get on set with her and I'm like, I said, I message her, I'll hold things. I'll just like, you need someone to lift things. I'm really, I have no issue. There's no ego here. So let's, let's go in. And that's what I was doing. I was, uh, I was helping lift things and just um, asking everyone on set, the DP cameras, learning everything about it. And part of post-production now I'm helping bring in um, uh, the, the, the composition and the music Composer. and uh, color and uh, VFX, the small amount of VFX. So I'm really all of it. Um, and you asked what was missing. Well, I asked her what was her game plan for distribution. And there was none. There was no wow. marketing or distribution plan. And, and she's a, a brilliant director. Uh, you know, she is I think a UCLA grad, film grad. Like I, she she knows what she's doing. And but this is the first she financed this one herself. Um, and she did a good job. She did a fantastic job. We're going to I think it's going to do well. Um, micro budget. Right. Mm -hmm. But she I learned a lot on the way. And I'm, I'm like purely not knowing industry. It's going in and asking those questions. I said, you know, when I came here, the first thing I asked is where's the bottleneck? And every producer I've met says, you know, be careful. Producers don't make money. You got to be they're the sales agents. And I'll just I'll put it out there. Hopefully, I don't get burned on this. Distributors and sales agents, be careful. So yeah, no, there's a lot of there's a lot of yeah. tricky games on the distribution side. Yeah, and if you so don't that, get hooked up it. with a good one or or know how the money's flowing in, and and yeah. always get a good entertainment attorney to review the final mm. final agreements. So that was it. So I came into this. I looked at, I found a bottleneck, and I said, "Let's, if, if they're the, if they're the ones making the final call to the point where they can, you know, you can, you can love the name of your film, uh, all you indie makers out there. The second you get to a distributor, they're gonna go, eh, I don't like it. Tr change the name of the film and whatever works distribution wise for yeah. in their eyes. They have and they have the full ability to do that legally. So I realized that they have that much power. Those are the first people I want to." So I went directly to the distributors and started building relationships there. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was recently talking to a, a client of mine. He actually reached out to a distributor before he sh uh, started raising a single penny of his budget. It's almost, it's almost raised. Mm -hmm. He said, hey, what are you – this distributor is a UK distributor. What are you most looking for now? Like what type of films could you really, really sell? Do you see huge profit potential? And that's what he did. So he kind of reversed engineered his audience, what the distributor was looking for. And they told him, if you can deliver the quality of movie, we, we've seen your other movies, we'll pick it up and we can probably make some good money. So pretty smart. There was one thing I recall saying the first meeting with the first distributor. Again, all I started all my network with uh, uh, first degree of separation. And then I, and then I branched out from there. So I was directly, I was first degree away uh, from someone in the distribution world. So I started with him and that kind of snowballed. Uh, was something that stood out that he said, and he's with the, also in the UK, a major company. And he said that the film festival route is overrated. Yeah. And he's like, you, know, you can spend your time there. You know, it feels good for you. It's a passion work, you know, but if it's from a financial place, like I don't, it, it doesn't mean much to us. To yeah. Honest. Other than like three or four of the big markets, if you get lucky and get in like, like mm -hmm. Berlin or Sundance or Cannes, but yeah, I agree a hundred percent. And I think the, my take on it is when during the pandemic, a lot of the festivals went online. Mm -hmm. Now some of the festivals have come back. Some have just stayed online and some have gone an online in-person hybrid and they're not nearly as effective. Yeah. People just aren't showing up. A lot of the festivals, as you know, they don't have real buyers. They don't have real distributors showing up. So mm -hmm. nothing wrong with getting in a few festivals, but I wouldn't put a lot of time and effort in it. Yeah. Um, that being said, I am going to Sundance um, two weeks, mainly to go snowboarding. Uh, cool. Uh, I might be there. I, I will let you yeah. know. I'm, I'm Let's connect. Still kind Please. Of, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I know I'm soft telling people that I'll be there. Um, and so, yeah, I have a handful of, there's a, you know, network that's really, there's a real network that's happening. That's for sure. Um, yeah. 
But yeah, I'm, I'm going there. I'm going there for snowboarding and, and some film. Good for you. Good for you. Life is short, man. You got to have fun. So on your current film, Out of Order, um, mm -hmm. you don't have to give the exact amount that you invested, but was it a six-figure investment or was it yeah, it was, more than that? No, it was six figures. Okay. So pretty, pretty serious investment. Um, let me ask you this. If in the future, um, and I'm not mm -hmm. speaking for myself, but if, but if someone had a great business plan together, they had a marketing plan like you described, what would be kind of your, your dream movie investment be? And, mm -hmm. and let me kind of spell out a few of the parameters. Uh, mm -hmm. What kind of budget range would you look to invest in? What kind of genre are you interested in? And is there like a mission that you might have like, oh, God, if you did an electric car movie, I'm a huge electric car person. That would be something that attracted me. So just really um, trying to get inside your mind a little bit. What are some of these things that would really attract you to putting together uh, some money into uh, your next movie? So I'll share, you know, um, a little bit about my the way I'm going about this right now is that I am aiming for less financial returns and more uh honestly just educating myself this is the period and that's what that's the period i'm holding it so equity investments i'm actually unless i can be it's, it's a micro budget or something of that nature i'm staying away from them i'm actually focusing more on debt financing if anything right now um but if there was and when i do get there you know if you can make it under a million you should. I think you said that. That's a, yeah. I've heard you say these, that. These days. Yeah. Because yeah. of the uh, uncertainty of the theatrical market right now for indies. And there's, yes, there's a lot of content out there. And, you know, libraries on, in the VOD market, like I've heard Netflix has closed their purse to a certain extent. So, yeah, if you can make it for under a million, you know, shoot in one, two locations, do inside shots in a city with good tax credits and outside shots somewhere else, you know, be just be intelligent in how you do it. Um, so, so, so you said something just a minute ago, you said, Hey, I'm not just investing solely for the investment side, but you really, you're trying to learn, get, mm -hmm. get knowledge. So you're kind of using this as kind of your, your film school. And then maybe one or two of them will pan out at the same time. Exactly. I'm paying for my education. This is, this is my education. I'm 30 years old. Um, I'm not going to back to university for this. I'm paying my way through, uh, and I understand the risks involved. Uh, but you know, I think this is, I think my education in this regard would be far better than a university education, uh, and hopefully with returns on top. Yeah, so, no, so. I, I agree 100%. And uh, hats off to you for your business acumen, um, having a successful business, selling it at such a young age. Um, and I think that business and marketing savvy kind of. Mm -hmm logically looking at the business and how to figure out to get the best returns, it will serve you well, at, at least the best you can. Cause there's, no, there's always some uncertainties in this business, right? Right. So I'll tell you, you asked if there's a genre I'm saying, uh, ideally impact, impact films. Uh, I had a friend who's, you know, did a film on uh, opioid epide uh, epidemic. Um, that's something that speaks to me personally. I'm saying to filmmakers, you can find out what, um, with ticks, with uh, with your investors, that's a smart move. That's you know I've I've lost friends, family members to that. Um, yeah, so very personal. That, it's it's personal. Yeah, and uh, that was something that was very interesting to me. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's impact impact films. I'm not looking for. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Other just solely entertaining films. Yeah. Um. One one final question before we go. Um, what would be other than having a really solid business plan and a good team with identifying your audience and, and how you would market the film, any, any kind of words of advice for filmmakers who might want to approach someone like yourself, not necessarily you, but, um, what their strategy or approach should be reaching out to who they know would maybe interested in film investing. Mm -hmm. Okay. First off, I would say do it. 
Don't think about it. Don't overthink about it. Just do it. Okay. Uh, reach out and that would be my number, my number one, get burned a bunch of times, but it's going to pay off for you. So thick and skin. Um, that'll be number one advice. Um, number two, hmm, number two is garner as much experience as you can and uh, build a na nice network. Even if you can't get someone on your set, it should be a call away to give you advice. So building a board behind you, people who are, you know, you can just pick up the phone and they'll help answer or get you, you know, people are very helpful. You'd be surprised. Um, that those. Those would be my yeah, two great best advice. advice. Uh -huh. Great advice. Um, so what's the best way that people can follow you or contact you if they want to keep track of uh, your world? And right. Your progress? So I'm off of social media except for LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn. So if you can follow, you go ahead, follow me there. And IMDB uh, is where I would be, you know, film related. That would be IMDB. And uh, there is going to be one other, I'll just... Uh, got on this. Uh, we are going to be doing another film um, in the cryptocurrency space, just to put a a, a little warm, a warm uh, entry into that feeler. Um, and if anyone wants to learn more about that, um, feel free to reach out. We're building a great team. We have a great EP on it. The script's fantastic. So feel free to reach out. Awesome. And how soon is this raise going to be started? Do you anticipate? Wow. So we're going to have it. I think. I think March is going to be, you know, when full, when I feel comfortable with a full polish, and I say polished, I mean like having it seen by quite a few eyes um, and passed around a bit. Uh, that's when I feel comfortable. That's where we're going to go in. Excellent. And yeah. uh, any, any idea where the out of order movie, I guess it's in post-production now when you might be we're, kind of targeting a release. So we're with the distribution route target release is also around I'd say three, four months out. Oh, wow. That's exciting. Yeah, I believe so. Exciting. Well, I hope it does really, really well for you. Once again, the film is out of order. Our guest today, uh, Menagem Wound Tyler. Um, yes. And we'll spell that in the show notes so you can, uh, you guys can connect anyone who's interested and follow him. And uh, really, really thank you for your time today. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for listening. And remember, it's... Time! There's never been a better time to make your own indie film. And if you have a dream project you're excited about and 100% committed to getting it funded, go to financeyourmovie.com and click on the green telephone button. You'll see our calendar, and if you find an open spot, grab it. You'll get a one on one call with me or one of my partners. It will be the best hour you've ever spent getting clarity and strategy towards financing your movie. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next week.